she a nympho I wanna fuck, baby, let me get your info Let me know what you wanna get yourself into Yeah, I know that you got some daddy issues How's it going, nerds? My name is Linkwood and welcome back to Eternal Hour Golden Oh, shit Anyway How's it going, nerds? My name is Linkwood, and welcome to Eternal Hour Golden Hour. This is a game that, in the last episode, we just pick up a kid from the orphanage because their parents died. Because his parents died, apparently, and we're like his aunt or some shit. I don't really know. I'm I'm not really following the plot too well. It is 2 a.m. and I'm a little out of it, but I want to record so I can have videos up daily. How's it going? Let's do this. That sounds like fun. I may just take you up on that. Uh, Megu? Oh, are you having trouble, Yasu? Here, let me help. And there she goes. I should give this girl a call later. <laughs> I should give this girl a call later. Maybe we can be friends. If nothing else, it's better than being a loner punk with a kid to raise. Ellipsis. Hope Yasu doesn't mind riding on a motorcycle. Parenthood. I never thought it'd get to I'd get to this so soon. Or at all. But I certainly became the guardian of a seven year old boy. Yasu is awfully quiet. I'm not sure how to even approach him at this point. He might hate me for trying to replace his parents. He might not even understand what happened to his parents or why. But I'll do my best to give him a good life and education. I just hope he doesn't end up a punk like me. Okay, Yasu. Have a good day at school. Ellipsis. It's been a few days now, and I still haven't gotten him to really talk to me. I've had better conversations with plants than with this kid. Speaking of plants, I may have to give that one away. Worrying with plants is just adding stress now. To be honest, I want to change more than that around here. But I can't do anything drastic. Not till Yasu tells me what's on his mind. Of course, none of that really matters if I don't find a job soon. Whoa! Who the heck could that be? Good morning, Rin. Mind if I come in? You're already inside my oh, house. Oh, Megumi. Um, yes, please, come in. I figured, since it's been about a week, I should come to see how you're doing. Has Yasu left for school already? Yes. He left with this cute girl. Ah, uh, what was her name? Naoko? Yes, that's her. Naoko tagged along with Yasu and they left for school together. Apparently, they're friends with some other kids. Daisuke and Katashi, probably. The three of them visited Yasu a lot at the orphanage. I'm glad he's got some friends with him. I walked him to school the first couple of days, but... Is something wrong? I'm worried about Yasu. He still won't I'm talk worried to about me. Yasu. He still won't talk to me. I'm worried, yo. He only speaks up when he has to. This morning, he left without a word. Half of the time, he mumbles his replies, so I can barely understand them. He hasn't gotten used to you yet. He was very quiet at the orphanage, but I still hoped he would open up to his guardian after a while. That only makes me worry more. What happened must have affected him deeply. Poor Yasu. He might be having a hard time understanding that his parents aren't coming back. I can understand that. I still can't believe they're gone either. I keep waking up at night, expecting another email to show up from Akio. He would always complain about the problematic children at school, and how they would always find new solutions to their everyday life. They were both teachers, right? Yes, very good ones. They always told me how they couldn't wait until Yasu was old enough to be one of their students. I'm sorry to make you remember all of that. I'm only making you sad. You are helping. You are helping, Megumi. I am? I... I really wanted to talk with someone about this. Thank you. Oh. Um. You're welcome. <laughs> so. How about we go out for a while? Oh, yes, please. Wait, what? Well, it's been a week, but you look like you've been spending a lot of time inside, taking care of Yasu. It would be good to get some fresh air, and explore the town. Well, I mean... 
I have spent a lot of time inside since I arrived, but I used to live here six years ago. Really? Have you not visited Tokyo since then? Not really. I always met Akio around the hot springs in Hobuchi. We used to spend a few days there having fun, so I haven't seen Tokyo since I left. Just as I suspected. That won't do. Come on. Hey, wait, what? You promised to help me buy a cell phone, right? Let's relax for a while and go shopping. What? Jeez, she's insistent. She barely gave me time to grab my bag, and now she's pushing me out the door. She was right, though. It would really help me to get out for a while. Well, now that Yasu is at school, we can explore the streets of Tokyo. Megumi, expectedly, excitedly, pulled on my hand and guides me through a few streets I know I used to know well. Some of these look like they just did back then, but most have changed completely. Gone is the tiny cafe I used to frequent as a child, replaced now by a large restaurant. The bookstore where I used to buy manga is still here, but I can barely recognize it now. With a slew of new, new displays, showcasing portable music players and headphones, the storefront seems to have traveled 20 years to the future. The air is cool and refreshing as we walk together through the shopping district. I see Megumi smiling beside me as she watches my mixed reaction to those streets that are both nostalgic and unfamiliar. So... Okay, you've proven your point! I feel like I'm lost in a new world. I knew it! You should have asked me to show you around much earlier. Did you see anywhere you wanted to go? I'll tell you about anything you're interested in. Um... What's that place with the dragon logo? That's the Okopoko Cafe. It's a new cafe opened by some Canadian folks. They serve North American dishes along with traditional ones. I love their bannock. Wait a second. What is a bannock? It's a kind of flatbread, but they make theirs with raisins and a honey glaze. It tastes like rainbows and butterflies. Butterflies don't taste good. I would know from personal experience. Looks like Magumi loves talking about food. Whoa. The old bakery is still where it used to be. Are they still selling melon pan? Oh, yes. Oh, their chocolate chip melon pan is the best. And their muffins. Oh... I have to say, he seemed to have quite an acquired taste for local delicacies. Of course. You need food to live. Plus, they make really tasty treats all over Tokyo. What about you, Rin? You don't indulge in eating sweets sometimes? I like something sweet once in a while. Whoa! We should have lunch together sometime. Whoa, she asked me out on a date? I'll show you all the best food around here, and you can tell me all about the tastiest trees from Kumiora. Oh, I will. Wow. Megumi seems much friendlier than before. I feel sorry for being so guarded with her before. When she's not mad at you, she's quite nice. It feels refreshing to see her smile and dawdle around as we travel through the snug streets of Tokyo. So many new places have opened up in, in the few years I've been away. Hey, Megumi. That boutique over there. The shop with the mannequins in the window. That seems like a new shop. Ah, uh, yes. The owners thought it was time to bring more cute fashion to Tokyo. Unfortunately, some people are complaining about it. And we'll see why they're complaining about it in the next video. Hope you okay. didn't know you're beautiful. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll speak with you all again in the next episode. I love you. Mwah. Have a good one. Roll the outro. <laughs>